Hello, welcome to Talk Wildlife. And today I'm delighted to have somebody from the Galapagos Conservation Trust. Uh, that is Lisa Wheeler. So hi, Lisa Wheeler. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good, good. So Lisa, you're the project manager uh, based in London for Galapagos Conservation Trust. And what I thought we'd do is we'd have a chat generally about the Galapagos and some of the threats and you know challenges that the Galapagos faces and, and how you as an organisation are actually helping counter that. Um, so I think first of all, uh, the main thing is let's, because everybody's probably heard the word Galapagos um, and they know that obviously, or hopefully people know that it was a massive inspiration to Darwin. Um, and that's probably why the Galapagos is in a lot of people's minds. Uh, it's more to do with the fact that, you know, it, it was Darwin and all the rest of it. So those that are sort of not, if you like, nature tourists, probably know the Galapagos as a name, but probably don't know a lot about it. So let's start off by saying sort of where it is, what it is, and then we'll talk a little bit about the habitats. So first of all, where is the Galapagos? Um, so Galapagos is off the coast of Ecuador. Um, it's owned by Ecuador. Um, and so, yeah, it's in the Pacific Ocean. Um, yeah, it's about a thousand kilometres off the coast. Thousand kilometres off the coast. And it's it's Galapagos Islands. Mm -hmm. It's not an island, it's islands. So how many islands is it made up of? Um, there are, we well, say there are 13 main islands but there's about 120 smaller islets scattered across the whole archipelago. Right, okay, and so 13 different, do you know roughly over what sort of range they are spread? Um, so the National Marine Reserve is about um, 133 kilometres squared. Um, right. So it's a big area. Um, yeah, I haven't got really a comparison for you though. Oh no, well, yeah. people can make that up themselves, yeah. you know. <laughs> um, right, so 13 main islands mm -hmm. spread over quite a big distance. Yeah. What's, what's the habitats like on the island? Are they sort of markedly different from one island to the next or are they very similar? What's, what's the habitats like on the islands? Um, so they're volcanic islands um, so, and they're still active volcanoes. Um, especially towards um, on the younger islands, um, which are in the west. Um, so um, those are more rocky, um, a lot of normal volcanic, a lot of volcanic rock. Um, so you get things like cactuses um, and kind of, yeah, more rocky um, areas. Um, but then some areas are really wet and humid um, and have more of a rainforest feel to them. Um, and so, yeah, so it does really change depending on what island you're on um, and depending on the, the season as well, how green it is. Um, so somewhere like Fernandina um, is, is quite rocky and somewhere like Floriana um, is more um, kind of green and um, yeah, a more kind of uh, tropical, tropical kind of area. Yeah, I, I think from the likes of some of the, the Attenborough programmes and, and stuff like that, the, the islands that you know, people or the habitat people most associate with the Galapagos is this sort of dry, arid, you know, volcanic type area, because that tends to be um, where the likes of the BBC, etc. concentrate. Um, is that because that's where the biggest density of the unusual wildlife is? Um, not necessarily. Um, it's probably some of the easiest places to access, it's probably a spot, especially with a lot of kit. Um, but you find, you know, things like um, the marine iguanas and the tortoises are found on, you know, almost every island. Um, there's, you know, there's 15 species of tortoises, you know, compared to 13 islands. So it's pretty much almost a species per island. Um, yeah, so, and they've all adapted to the, the habitat that's there. Um, yeah. Right, okay. and. Um... So 13 islands, hmm. how many of those are actually permanently populated by yeah. people? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good question. I think a lot of people are surprised that there is a resident population 
um, on Galapagos. Um, but actually, it's four of those islands um, have got towns on. Um, but overall, the towns that make up 3% of the islands, um, the rest of the 90, you know, 7% is all national park. Um, so it's quite a small area. Um, but there are about 30,000 people who live there across right. these four islands. Right, yeah. so four islands. So where's sort of the biggest population? Where's the biggest? It would be called a town. Is it a town? It, it is a town. Um, it's Santa Cruz. Um, so uh, that's kind of where the majority of tourists will know um, is Santa Cruz. It's kind of where a lot of the uh, the ships are, um, a lot of the, the research um a lot of our research kind of comes out of um, Santa Cruz um, and they've got about a population I think of about 20, 20,000 so it's yeah. a big chunk of, of the main population in that town. Yeah yeah right okay so we've talked about people who are a species on the islands but let's talk about some of the key species. Mm -hmm. um, clearly the, there has been coverage of the likes of the marine iguana and various things like that but what are the real, you know, what are the, I mean, that's clearly one of them, but what are the real key species there? What are the, what are the sort of, you know, what draws people as naturalists to the Galapagos? Um, so I think for, there is a mix, you know, there's so many species um, on Galapagos and majority of them are only found there as well. Um, so, you know, it's very famous for, you know, things like the marine iguana. Um, I'd, see what, I'd say one of the key species and very charismatic is the uh, Galapagos tortoise um, obviously the largest tortoise in the world um, you know they're very kind of um, famous for lumbering through you know the vegetation and um, you know hanging out um, kind of around so I think I think that, that probably is one of the big draws I mean you can see our logo um, yeah. is, is yeah. the tortoise and um, and even the uh, the word Galapagos is an old Spanish word for tortoise. All oh, um, right. Tortoises are really ingrained in you know um, the yeah kind of the history of Galapagos. So I'd say that's probably the key species. Um, but it's also really famous for its birds. Um, and so Darwin Link is um, obviously very famous, and he was very interested in the finches and um, also the mockingbirds there as well. Um, and actually the mockingbirds were almost just, well, and if not more important than the finches in terms of how he came about his, his theory of evolution. Um, yeah. yeah, so I think, you know, the very unique birds there as well um, definitely draw a lot of visitors. Um, and then you can't talk about Galapagos without talking about its marine life as well. Um, you know, it's very, very famous for its marine life, um, its sharks. Um, sea lions, penguins, um, and and that. So there's a there's a lot of draws. Um, yeah, yeah. That sort of, yeah, get people in. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the mockingbirds because they they sort of like Russell Wallace sort of is in the shadow of Darwin. I think the mockingbirds are actually in the shadow of the finches. Um, <laughs> so what a lot a lot of people don't know is is just how um, how much the difference in the mockingbirds on the various islands played in Darwin's sort of thinking um, when he sort of sat down with with John Gould and they worked through these things. Um, so yeah, I mean, great that the mockingbirds get a, a bit of a call there. So, <laughs> And overall, so, you know, what, what I'd like to do in the future is I'd like to do individual conversations, having individual conversations about your projects and individual species, but overall, how you know what's the health of the wildlife especially given you know that there are human inhabitants there now which has its own sort of issues with you know rats coming in on cargo and various things so before we come into how you you know you manage them challenges what's the overall health of the wildlife on Galapagos? Um, I mean it does depend on what species you're you're talking about um, you know things like the tor tortoises have been hit um, in you know the very you know kind of in Darwin's time with uh, pirates and buccaneers and um, you know sea ships like that that would take the tortoises off so a lot of tortoises have you know gone through um, or a lot of species have gone through massive declines um, a long time ago and now the threats are just kind of you know adding on to each other so climate change invasive species as you mentioned you know have all had an impact um, I mean, overall, I think the health is is strong because there is a, 
uh, you know, the Ecuadorian government and the local population are, um, uh, you know, would like to see Galapagos conserved. Um, and there's a lot of international interest in it as well, which kind of helps helps the, the, the argument. Um, so we're making a lot of wins, um, but the challenges obviously are still there. So um, yeah. it is an important, important area. So let's talk about them challenges. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned sort of human population and of course, wherever you get sort of human population, you, you know there's going to be a challenge. Um, so what are the sort of key challenges? without talking about the likes of climate change and stuff like that, which we might touch on a little bit later, but um, from a localised point of view, mm. what are the key challenges? Um, so we see the, key, you know, one of the key challenges is invasive species. Um, so it depends on what island you're on, but um, kind of invasive species such as rats um, have an, a, des a devastating impact on, on the wildlife of Galapagos. Um, you get domesticated animals as well that um, are causing problems. So goats, rat, uh, goats, pigs, um, cats, feral cats. Um, you also get um, kind of marine invasives as well. Um, that we don't know a lot about. Um, so yeah, so we'd say that you know invasive species, you know, is is really one of the the key problems um, because Galapagos is so unique that it's never had some of these sorts of predators um, yeah. it doesn't really have it doesn't have loads of mammals it, it has sea lions um, it has uh, some bats and a few mice but that's about it it's not used to you know having rats on the islands or or you know or predators um, you know s such as that so um, they, that does cause a cause a real issue and on a lot of the islands because all of the islands have been visited um, so you know a lot of them have been uh, you know have you know, had some kind of invasive species, most of them have rats. So, okay, so goats. So mm -hmm. if you needed to, excuse the phrase, but eradicate goats, mm. that's easy because they're big and you can see them and then that's it, you can get them off. Yeah. How you get them off is up to you. Right? <laughs> that's goats. Now then, rats, Yeah. different story. You can get everywhere, the little, how and what has been done to try and manage the rats on the islands? Yeah, so um, the conservation has been, or the kind of um, tackling that has been at both kind of very local level. So um, a lot of it is baiting, um, you know, that's really all you can do for rats is, is bait. Um, so, you know, at local levels, we can bait around areas that we know are um, kind of nesting areas for birds. Um, so we can make sure kind of areas like that are, are baited and so the rat population is kept down. Um, but we have also, um, and one of our large projects um, that we're working on is Floriana Island. Um, so Floriana is in the south of um, Galapagos and um, we're working with um, larger partners such as Island Conservation who are, uh, you know, very um, kind of keen on this sort of thing and Durrell as well, Durrell Wildlife um, Trust. And, um, you know, we're trying to actually eradicate the whole of Floriana of rats. It'll be a big project because it's yeah, quite yeah. a big island. Um, it has got a local community as well. Um, so, you know, so we are doing it at both levels, but, you know, those big ones take years and they take a lot of money. Um, but it is possible. Um, you know, we're hoping that new technologies are coming about all the time. So whereas usually you used to have to drop it by helicopter, we're hoping that we might be able to drop bait by um, drones and that will obviously reduce the cost. So, right, you, know, right. there's, you know, so there's, there, there are, <coughs> you know, there are challenges. Um, but yeah, we hope that, yeah, we can we can kind of work towards, um, you know, that kind of, you know, those big successes that will mean, um, you know, the eradication of, of rats on an island would be possible. And they yeah. have, you know, our eradication has started at the bigger things like the, the, the goats, which are easier. And, and as we've learned and adapted, um, hopefully we can tackle kind of, you know, whole islands worth. Yeah, so domestic animals. Um, before I go on to that, the rat, just how big is, is the rat problem? You know, it, it, are we talking about like, you know, this is plague proportions and we've really got to do something or is it just almost prevention rather than cure it's preventing them getting onto the islands or you know just managing the population when they're there how, how big is it 
Um, on some of like Floriana, it is a real issue. Um, so there have been 12 local extinctions of species off Floriana. We think a large proportion of those is due to invasive species, um, yeah, such as the rats um, and, and kind of, you know, habitat change due to, you know, larger, larger mammals as well. Yeah, yeah, because getting back to goats and pigs, so yeah. goats and pigs, is there a legacy of sort of goats and pigs that are already there that were left there by these sort of buccaneers that nip over there with their goats and left them there? Is there a legacy of them um, or is it that they have come across with sort of the new population of, of the islands? Um, because that will obviously have an impact on how they managed. So which is which is it? Um, as we're hearing, there's no simple answer. Um, it's probably a mix of both, to be yeah. honest. Um, a lot of you know the goats that have gone that went feral, and actually there are no goats anymore. Um, so that was a that was a big success. Um, but yeah, they they had been feral for quite some time, so it wasn't you know they weren't kind of stock that people were managing themselves and just letting roam free. Um, yeah. It was you know they were feral um, in terms of you know they didn't belong to anyone in per se. Um, yeah. Excellent. And, and what are the challenges? So we, we talked about native species. Mm -hmm. So what are the challenges are there? You know that the likes of yourselves uh, are trying to counter. Um. So kind of the other one is um, overfishing or over exploitation. Um. It's hit the news recently. Um. That you know there is an industrial fishing fleet. Um. Of, mm. Um, the off the marine reserve um, and, and they're allowed to be there it is open water there um, but that kind of you know industrial fishing effort is we think is really impacting the the shark and um, you know population of, of other marine animals um, so that's another key threat that we're having to um, yeah we're having to face um, and to touch on kind of the third one is um, pollution you know plastic yeah. is one of the famous you know is is very very topical at the moment everyone's interested in it and galapagos isn't immune as like anywhere else it still has a, a pollution problem um yeah so so they're the other two kind of streams that we were aiming to tackle sure and and you mentioned earlier on about sort of the pride in the galapagos um and I, I know from talking to sort of the World Land Trust and people like that, that, um, you know, locals, uh, local communities are sort of, if they've got a special biodiversity, uh, can take a real pride in it and, and put a lot back into it. You just have to look at, you know, what's happening in Regura in Brazil from some of the interviews I've done, you know, they, they're employing a lot of locals there who are working really hard to sort of regenerate the forests. Um, you mentioned that, so that's the case on the Galapagos. The, the the citizens as a whole are proud of it, look after it. Yeah, I mean, so that's a big stream of our work is our education and outreach on the islands. Um, places like Santa Cruz, although the town is on the coast, um, not many, you know, because it's built up and because there's a lot of hotels on the beaches, not many people have actually got access to the beach, um, which surprises a lot of people. Um, you can walk to a beach, but it is quite far and the local population, um, you know, maybe, you know, you know, it doesn't feel like they want to use a beach that, you know, they have to walk to when it's hot. Um, so there are challenges there in terms of getting people connected with the nature that is around them. But um, you, we are we have got outreach um, officers on, on Galapagos, on, on both Santa Cruz and San Cristobal. And so they're doing a lot of work with the community to to really instill this idea of, you know, that Galapagos is so unique and um, that, you know, you need to protect the area around you. Um, and, and that's something I'm very passionate about as well, um, ensuring that kind of the conservation comes from the local um, yeah. kind of population rather than it's just international scientists flying over to, you know, to clean up a problem. Um, but, you know, we work with the locals and and we engage them because, you know, the tourism industry is huge in Galapagos um, and, you know, we want tourists who go there, you know, to, you know, also feel the same the same way. And, and that can only really come from, you know, local tour guides really having a real understanding of conservation and the problems and, and how we can solve them. So.
Yeah, so again, you talk tourism. Um, th there's there's a, a real chicken and egg situation at the moment, and I've had this conversation with other um, people I've interviewed is, you know, you, on the one hand, you've been told don't fly because of carbon and all the rest of it. But on the other hand, the damage that can be done to a local community and a local biodiversity by not having ecotourism, because then they have to find alternate means of, of raising funds, um, you know, is, it's, it's a very tricky situation. So clearly, from my point of view, I would encourage it, look, you know, at the end of the day, places like the Galapagos, Regu, or all the rest of it, they rely on, you know, tourism, they rely on that, that kind of money. Um, so is that is that your thoughts as well? You know, you do need people coming to the Galapagos because a lot of people go, oh, Galapagos, it should be pristine. We should leave it alone and all the rest of it. And I have to admit, I was one of them. Uh, you know, I would I always said I would never go to the Galapagos as a tourist because it's supposed to be pristine. Um, but that view I've changed considerably through talk wildlife and, and talking about eco tourism. So not that I can afford to go to the club because but <laughs> one day. Um, so yeah, so what, what's from your point of view, from somebody that's working in the Galapagos, in conservation, how important is ecotourism? Yeah, I mean, I think it's incredibly important. Um, you know, the, the lockdown um, in Galapagos has really shown that, you know, they are so reliant on tourism to boost their economy. And without it, we're really worried that things like, um, you know, illegal fishing, over-exploitation, um, wildlife trafficking might just increase um, on the islands. We don't have any um, hard evidence that that is the case, but, you know, that's what we've been hearing from the islands and that's what we've been hearing from our partners over there, is that's what they're worried about. And, and so are we. And you're right, you can't, you can't just say don't go because, yeah. you know, it we want people to experience it and see it because it is incredible and it's when you go there you really understand why it is such an important place and and that's really important for people to to feel and to connect with and, and to understand um you know otherwise they'll probably just forget about it and you know if you know and then no no you know no conservation will happen there if if no one really cares about it sure um but it is a real chicken and egg situation because um you know it's you know, tourism does bring its own problem, but we think that, yeah, if tourism is done well and sustainable um, and can boost the local economy without impacting the local wildlife, then, you know, we think that that is kind of the optimal situation. Yeah, and I've, I've spoken to people that have been there and they say it is really well managed, um, which is which is great, you know, because then you've got the best of both worlds. You know, you've got the money coming in, but you've also got that care for you know, the natural environment. Um, so let's talk about Galapagos Conservation Trust. Um, how long has it been going for a start? Uh, we've been going 25 years, so this is our 25th. Oh, happy anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> um, and clearly you're a small organisation, but you have a, a massive impact. You know, I know that from senior newsletters and all the rest of it. And I would like, as I say, to because otherwise, you know, this could be a four hour interview because the mm -hmm. projects are sort of quite vast and every single one of them has is interesting so you know I, I could literally talk for 20 minutes on each one and I, I think maybe we should do that do some interviews do a series of them but just give us a, a sort of potted history so you know what is it you do there how do you, you you talked about interacting with sort of locals what is your work what what do you do there um yeah so we are we're a UK charity we're based in London um and um what we really do is we raise funds and awareness in the UK to support the, the conservation in Galapagos um, and we also drive our own um, programs so um, things like the education and plastics program are really being driven um, because we saw a gap in in what the, the people um, or the, the organisations over there were doing. Um, yeah, so we do a bit of both. We, we raise a lot of money in the UK that, that support conservation um, on the ground um, and yeah, and then drive our own programs as well. Yeah, brilliant. And long may it continue. So, so I think what we'll do, because we, we've been talking bizarrely for about 25 minutes already, and I think we've given a sort of good overview of sort of the Galapagos, and we've started to introduce Galapagos Conservation Trust. Um, 
as I say, if it's all right with you, I think what we, you know, what would be really good is if we, we talk about, I mean, the Floriana restoration project and sort of, you know, some of the mangrove finch projects and stuff like that um, at, a, at a sort of future date and, and put them up as well, because I think people will generally, be, you know, be interested and genuinely be interested in the Galapagos and finding out more about the Galapagos and the work that you guys are doing. So I think what we'll do is if we leave it there for now, and maybe you know talk again in the future is that okay with you yeah that's great excellent right well thanks ever so much for your time and i look forward to definitely speaking to you about some of the projects over the coming months brilliant well thank right. you very much for having us thanks a lot lisa thanks take care bye bye